G'day fellas and welcome to the next Age of Empires 4 patch. This is 11.1.12.0.1. Now we were promised this was going to be an insanely big patch, which is why the patch before this was so damn small. So hopefully we haven't been told a porky and it is actually going to be huge. Now apologies for getting this video out to you guys late. Uh, I must have uh, forgot to set my alarm. I just realized this patch has been live for like 10 hours, 11 hours at this point. And ideally, I'd like to be covering it the moment it drops. But anyway, let's get into it and take a look at what is new. So we've got Map Monsters 3.0. I know you guys have all been looking forward to getting back into that habit. Uh, so the relaxing waves have brought back old friends, but with new rewards. So search the map and find the monsters as they roam to receive new random global buffs for your units. Uh, gather speed, bro. <laughs> what? Hold on, hold on. Gather speed 100%. Gather capacity plus 50%. Mo okay, no, this is... What is this? Th this has got to be a joke. What's the date? No, it's not April 1st. Excuse me? Like, th this is completely broken. Hold on. The map monster's game... Oh, okay, it's a game mode. Oh, it's a game mode. Oh, okay, I don't care then. All right, next up. What do we got? <laughs> Jeez, man, you had me a little bit scared because last time the map monsters were in ranked... Okay, but now it's a game mode, which means you need to select it. So you can only play it in quick match or custom, which I guess for, for many people, this is going to be relevant. Uh, but for most people who play ranked, it's not going to be that relevant because it's not going to make an appearance. Uh, but still pretty cool, though. Like, but the, these are just wildly overpowered. Uh, I wonder if there's going to be multiple buffs at the same time, though. So you could have like, you know, plus 25% health and plus 25% attack. That'd be pretty cool. Imagine if you, you drew the short stick, though, and you got 30% vision versus, like, 100% gather speed. Like, you're literally doubling your vil count. That's kind of wild. Um, all right. So what else have we got here? We've got some new icons or new uh, portraits that are coming out. Something in the water. Uh, so we, I'm just going to zoom straight through all this stuff. Let's get on to the meat and potatoes of this. So we've got... Hold on, hold on. This, this update brings with it ranked season updates. This update brings with it a map pool rotation as well as some small changes to help keep the season fresh, including downvote increase from 3 to 4, map size increase from 9 to 10. So we've got Dry Arabia, cool, Four Lakes, Golden Pit, Gorge, Hill and Dale, Himiyama, Lippi, Lippi, Lippiyama, uh, Lippini, Mongolian Heights, Rocky River, and Sakutra. So, if we're playing ranked right now, we're banning four lakes. Get it out of here. That's one. Sukutra, that's two. And then, realistically, like, all of the other maps are pretty good quality. I'd be happy with every single other map here. So, I mean, they've obviously got water and a couple of hybrids on there. Like, uh, I guess, technically, Mongolian Heights is a bit of a hybrid as well. Um, so, they've got them on there to keep those, those people happy. But most people just want to play land maps. And then the team rank map pool, Ancient Spires. Good to see it coming back. Archipelago, get it out of here. Dry Arabia, Forest Ponds, Gorge, Himiyama, King of the Hill, Marshland, Rocky River, Waterholes. All right, so decent map changes as well. I, I just want to thank the devs for doing this. Like, if, if you can't do anything for us, at least give us a map pool rotation halfway through the season, a quarter way through the season, a third through the season, whatever it is. Like, just, just give us that try and spice things up a little bit with that anyway let's move on so build spotlight design update rework now just before we go through this i'm just going to facet or caveat this by saying i haven't read through any of this i haven't gone through any of like the back channels or whatnot i haven't seen a single thing so i'm going to be reviewing this seeing this for the first time uh now because this is so late that i'm responding to this is like 10 hours after 11 hours after it got posted people have like started reacting to it so we've seen like beasties reacted um we've also seen reddit reacting so we might go through some reddit comments at the end and just try and get a bit of an idea on what the community sentiment is this update features a rework of how the Russ accrue bounty. Previously, Rus Russ uh, gained bounty upon defeating huntable animals and wolves. This led to a race at the start of every game where both players engaged in a mini game to see who could find and defeat the most hunt, which, can I just say, was absolutely terrible. Nobody enjoyed playing against the Rus because it meant I had to make a second scout at the start and then I had to change my entire build order and now I'm d slow up to the second age, whereas the Rus player was absolutely fine because they did that every single game. They knew what their timings were. So with this new update, Rus gains bounty over time while gathering food from animals, so both players should have more time to vie for control over the hunt on the map. Additionally, for all civilizations, Professional Scouts fundamentally has been updated to be easier to use. Previously, a player had to right-click on a deer, then shift-click to the town center and repeat that process. Yes, you'd have to do it seven times for a hunt. Now a player can simply right-click on a deer once with the technology research and the scout will bring the deer back to the capital town center by default or a drop-off location of your choice. How do you choose the drop-off location? That's interesting. So I, you could do a mill, you could do a secondary TC. To move an entire herd sequentially, a player can simply shift right-click the entire herd quickly 
and the scouts will do the rest. Wow, that's actually a really good change. That, uh, that is, I, I want to just shout out to the devs here because they have identified the main issue with professional scouts. The main issue with professional scouts isn't that it's expensive. It's not that you need to make scouts from the stable. It's that it is very clunky to use. It doesn't feel good to use. Now, we there was a time when we did see players use it, and that's when it was very, very strong. So people would, you know, use the extra APM to, to go and get there. But for 99.9% .9 of players, it just felt terrible to use professional scouts. Now, it seems like it's going to be really simple. Just select your scout. You can even just do it with one scout, and you just shift right click. You know when you were playing against the Roos, and you would shift right click the entire hunt? It was simple, because you'd only need to make seven clicks. I suspect now you can probably just do that with professional scouts. That's awesome. That is awesome. Gameplay. Console, UX, UI, and menus. So team rank match search now shows the correct max, maps to veto. And free for all v votes menu for quick match should now work when using controller. I wonder if the devs are going to fix that Xbox players can't use the King's abilities yet. Because uh, that, that's been like, how long have we had FFA out for and they still haven't fixed that? And that, that's kind of like a core mechanic. You know, they, they, they can't use the movement speed. They can't use their... Um, their their king ability what's the one that reveals all the other kings all right maps general map changes sheep distribution sheep instances have been increased across several solo ranked maps while the amount of sheep per instant instance has decreased this change aims to spread sheep across oh i see in a more consistent manner and with less instances where all sheep cluster around the same area leaving others completely vacant this change also slightly increases the overall amount of sheep on each of the affected maps so the affected maps are four lakes hill and dale lippany the pit and rocky river really good change uh this was this was a huge complaint of mine i remember i played a game on himiyama once where my opponent and i both scouted on opposite sides of the map we both scouted the exact same amount of uh, of, of, I guess you'd say, like, square miles or, or square feet. Um, he came out with 17 sheep. I came out with four. And I, I just felt, you know, you feel terrible after that. There's just there's no point in playing after that point. You just don't have... You're going to have to transition to farms earlier. You're out on the map. You're subject to raids earlier. So it just hurts a lot. Developer note. We will aim to improve sheep distribution further and implement and revert these changes based on our observation and feedback provided by the community. Great job, devs. Map-specific changes. Thickets, Nagari, and Golden Pit. Uh, all pretty... The, these two are uncompetitive. Golden Pit, a little bit less so as well. Uh, balance and bug fixes. General changes and bug fixes. Fish and, fixed an issue in Dominion where killing a Monarch unit as it entered a building would not award population to the player. Great change right there. This is absolutely wonderful to see. Really, really good stuff because there was a split second where you could get the kill and it wouldn't award it and it did feel terrible. Uh, fixed Turkish localization inconsistency. I, re I really hope that they fix that Xbox bug, by the way. I don't know if they've if they have but it's massively game breaking all civilizations trade posts can now be selected in the fog of war this allows players to more easily check which mercenaries are available to the byzantines okay wield siege engines no longer hold on wield siege engines siege units no longer pack and unpacked this includes the springled nest of bees culverin ribaldequin hold on are we getting the siege rework they were talking about a siege rework, right? This includes the Springles, Nest of Bees, Culverin, Reboldequin, and Cannon. These units can now find and attack targets automatically while they... Oh my freaking god, dude. And they should feel far more responsive when attempting to move and shoot. Do you know what this means? This means that when you send your army and you just have them chilling at the front of your base and the enemy pushes into you, your Nest of Bees will automatically acquire targets and fire rather than just sitting there idle because you didn't put them on, on G. You always had to like click G on the keyboard so that they would start firing. Oh, it's, a, it's the small things, mate. It's the small things, but chef's kiss. This is, that, that's a massive buff. Can I just say right now, this is a huge buff to the Nest of Bees. Reboldequin as well. Not so much the cannon, because the cannon doesn't really deal with damage or deal with units. Springled, not so much, because it's very much a specialist, and same with the Culverin. But the Nest of Bees, which is just good at shooting everything, and the Reboldequin, which you just always want it to be shooting no matter what it is, uh, these are massive buffs for it. it look, it's not going to be hugely game-changing, but it is going to mean that there is um, a lot more forgiveness with these units. Really, really good change. Previously, walls and palisades placed across and near the boundary of a resource in Fog of War would have gaps in the built structure that would leave a passage for enemy units. This should now be fixed. Really, really good change here. This was very annoying. I, I remember commenting on this in a couple of videos. Scouts with the professional scouts technology will now automatically return deer carcasses after picking them up. You can now queue or pick up commands between deer, and after collecting the carcass, the scout will draw. 
<laughs> the scout will draw. After researching professional, professional scouts, a new ability is available to the scout. Set automatic. Oh, that's how they did it. Okay, set automatic drop-off target. So it's kind of like the um, like the trade post and the market for the uh, for the traders. Just give me a second. I'm just going to take a drink. Uh, I'll give you a second to guess what I'm drinking. Give me a second. Oh my god, that is amazing. It's in a can, I'll tell you that much. It is so good. I'm drinking some Swedish. Swedish uh, cider. God, that is, that is so good. Uh, this action sets an alternate, alternative drop point for deer in the town center, or if the town center is not desired. No, the action of picking up deer is now combined with dropping off. This means that any queued commands between picking up a deer carcass will be carried out only after the deer has been dropped off. Really, really cool change. So what does that mean? That means that you could... Uh, if you, if you want to get a deer hunt behind an enemy town center, you shift Q your scout, then right click the deer, then again, shift Q your scout, uh, you know, out, outside the town center radius, and then get the deer, and that will go, oh, but then, ah, oh, but then it will run through the enemy town center when it's delivering the deer. Mm, okay, so you'd still have to micro it, never mind. Okay, I, I thought I had a, a good idea, but it, it's not, never mind. All right, can I just quickly check how much we've got here? Oh, okay. This is looking good. This is looking good. I saw a lot of flags. I saw a lot of flags. I saw a lot of flags. This is looking good. Okay. Civ specific changes. Welcome to the meat and potatoes, ladies and gentlemen. We got here 12 minutes through the video. It is time. The Abbasid Dynasty. Fertile Crescent discount increased. Well, they're dangerous. From 30 to 35%. Now, keep in mind, Fertile Crescent is your upgrade that uh, decreases the cost of your town centers, your houses, your farms, your mills, your lumber, lumber, lumberjacks, your lumber posts, your lumber, what are they called? Lumber camps. There we go. We got it in the end. Swapped Grand Bazaar and Armored Caravans. So let's uh, let's do a little bit of an alt tab here. Hopefully, yep, okay, we're all good. So Grand Bazaar and Armored Caravans. So I think I've already got the update in. So if we just have a look here. Yeah, um, oh, 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 and it's only three. Okay, used to be five. Okay, I like this. I like this a lot. Oh, this is so smart. Oh, devs, you are so, so smart. Armored Caravans armor on trade units reduced from five plus five, five to three, three. Armored caravan cost reduced from 75,200 to 2575 to make it in line with the uh, age two tech. Does that mean the age three tech? Oh, they didn't change it. That that should be more. This, it, hey, devs, you forgot something. Hey, devs, increase the cost of Grand Bazaar, please. <laughs> Suck it, Abbasid players. I'm just kidding. Uh, added new, but seriously, fix it. <laughs> added new tech to culture wing. Oh, shit. Public libraries, which adds two HP to all villagers and traders for each eco. Yo, this is sick. Excuse me? Where is this? Oh, it's in the co Oh, okay, never mind. It's Imperial Age. Wait, wh where's... Where's prophetization? Okay, okay. Prophetization tech move to mosque. Okay, we're, we're chasing our tails right now, it feels like. I, I should just read the whole notes and then get to it. Okay. So prophetization move to mosque. Camel archer. Feudal health increase 140 to 150. Veteran health increase from 170 to 175. And camel rider, the cost adjusts from 160, 30, 30 to 130, 45, 45. Very nice change here for the camel rider. It was very food heavy before. It meant that you couldn't really make it until you were on farms. Uh, but this is quite nice. This is this is very, very good. Okay, so overall, wh what, what are the devs trying to do here? Well, first and foremost, they're buffing up your eco wing, right? Your fertile crescent is now stronger. You might not think 30 to 35% is a lot, but I assure you it is. And it will definitely add up over the course of the game. This is going to reduce the cost of your houses or your eco buildings, as it says right there. But the big thing for me is definitely this trade wing change. Because now all of a sudden, your traders, which previously were very easy to get picked off by units such as the horsemen, have a lot more armor. Now, all of a sudden, instead of your traders having zero armor, they're having three armor. And when you think about a horseman that does like, what, nine damage? You're reducing the damage there that it's doing by a third. So we're talking 33%. And you can probably go to the extent of getting like melee armor and now you've got four. It basically just means that you have traders that survive longer. You can react to those enemy units getting into your trade line. Of course, you are going to be missing out on that secondary resource, which is going to be available from the Grand Bazaar. But the reality is that resource... It was nice, but it wasn't huge. Definitely not at that point, because typically you're struggling with, say, eight, nine, ten traders. You're trying to get that trade online. And so 25% of the gold value in food, when you've already got food so accessible because you're the Abbasid, you've got the berries, you've got the deer, you've got your plenty of sheep because they've just fixed up sheep. I don't really see it as like a huge loss for them. So overall, I think this is a buff to the Abbasid. It's a buff to Abbasid trade. Uh, 
it, it is a great change. And I'm looking forward to the Abbasid. Also, profitization in the mosque for anybody wondering what this was. It was an upgrade that allowed your uh, your imams or... Yeah, you, you, you've got imams, don't you? I think you do. Uh, it, it allowed your imams to convert individual units. So instead of converting like, you know, wall -a -lol, it would just be little wall -a -lol, wall -a -lol, like that. All right, so overall for the Abbasid changes, really good. Love it. Byzantines, let's check into it. Can I, can I just say it's so nice having a big patch like this after the last patch it felt so lackluster and so terrible but to see this many changes just for the abbasid oh i'm loving it loving it loving it byzantines imperial hippodrome triumph generation speed increase from 30 to 25 seconds good change it, this is this needed to be, to be changed i'm glad that they've identified that because it was definitely uh berry landmark was definitely a stronger option so this is good system of the first hill starting flask count increased from two to six another great change really really good and i think this is definitely going to be putting the system of the first hill on the map now because it means that you've got six, six or four extra flasks that you can use uh to empower things like kershiks or your cataphracts so really really nice and speaking of cataphract cataphract move speed increased to night speed 1.5 to 1.62 they still don't have a charge though so just remember they're still you know i'm, I'm not going to be writing letters home about how my cataphracts are amazing description updated to correctly show 12 tra 12 trample damage Oh, yeah, that's right. They Did they... What, I, I don't remember the trample damage thing. Maybe I'm just going crazy. Okay. And border settlements. Cost increase from 25.50 to 46... Or 40.80. Okay, give me a sec. Drink time. Okay. So border settlements, the cost increase makes sense because everybody got it. It wasn't even a discussion. It was mandatory. It was just something you didn't have to think about and it was just something that you clicked. So that's a good change. It makes it a little bit more of like, should I get it now or should I wait? that sort of thing cataphract move speed increase it's nice uh is it going to make the cataphract as desirable as the knight i don't think so um but we'll, we'll have to wait and see system of the first hill this is nice to get people to actually start thinking about this and this was something that i identified with the byzantines from like the very first day i was like i don't see any circumstance where i would ever make this landmark other than going for like a super duper fast castle but even then even if I go for a super duper fast castle, if I can get like a second or a third uh, system out, it doesn't really make sense to go into the system of the first hill because I'm getting so much value from my other landmark. So it, yeah, this this hopefully makes people go, okay, I can just do a Byzantine fast castle all in. I don't think it will, but we'll have to see. You know, once the top players start using it and testing it and going, oh, this, is, this isn't terrible, uh, then I think we can see it a lot. So overall, good changes for the Byzantines. Chinese, here we go, my boys. How much have we got? Oh, we got a fair bit here. Okay. Um, Ming Dynasty. Health bonus increased from 10 to 15%. This is a good change. The reason why this is a good change is because nobody went Ming Dynasty. You'd go for the Ming Dynasty for Grenadiers, or you would go the Ming Dynasty before you would go into the Yuan Dynasty in the late game if you knew it was going to be a tough one. But this is good because people would always just go for the Yuan Dynasty for the extra movement speed. Now this extra health is actually like, okay, maybe I can consider you. The extra movement speed is really nice from the Yuan Dynasty, but that extra health, that now we're starting to talk. Like this is a 50% buff here. This is a lot of buff for, for this this specific thing. I, th I think this might just be enough to make people go, you know what? I am going to go Ming Dynasty here. So that's a nice change. Uh, Thunderclap bombs, nest of bees. So this is for your uh, Baoshuan. Uh, attack reload speed bugger fixed. In this case, reducing it from 4.5 to 6.5 seconds between attacks. Okay, so it was firing too fast. Fair enough. Extra materials. So this is the unique uh, Chinese upgrade that allowed your outposts to repair your walls. I think that was it, if we double check. Yeah, extra materials. Okay, so text description now correctly describes the effect of repair all nearby walls for 20 health per second. Repairing all nearby stone walls instead of one at a time has been the effect for a long time. Okay. Researching extra materials now also grants the passive ability to the Barbican of the Sun, Great Wall Gatehouse, and Keeps. That's actually huge. Alongside stone wall towers and outposts. Wow, that's actually sick, dude. Oh my god. That, dude, that's so good. Dude, that is so good. The passive healing now also targets nearby palisade walls, palisade gates, and stone wall gates. Now, why is this so good? It's so good because keeps cost stone. Stone walls cost stone. And if it's mainly the keeps, right? 
Now, I don't think you can stack extra materials. I don't think you can put down a keep and then have like 20 outposts around it and they're all just healing the keep. I don't think that's how it works. I think you can only get extra materials on your buildings one at a time. Um, but still, 20 health per second is decent. I'd have to double check the numbers, but this is probably around a villager or two villagers. And just to give you a bit of an idea, this could offset, I think, probably about half a trebuchet, maybe a little bit more. So all of a sudden, it's going to, to try and treb down Chinese buildings is going to be so much harder because now all of a sudden you need an extra treb to get over that first one, a second treb to get over that. It, it just it ma makes you need another treb, which just gives the Chinese a little bit more time, a little bit more time to get that nest to be out, a little bit more time to get that sprinkled out. And that is awesome. That is such a small change, but it's so sick, dude. The passive healing now also targets near... Oh, you, Okay, really, really cool change. So overall, the strength of the Chinese doesn't really go up or go down, right? Like the amount of games you're reaching Ming Dynasty as the Chinese, it's very low in the first place. Probably 2% to 4% of games you're reaching Ming Dynasty. Uh, extra materials. This is a big change because the Chinese love making keeps. They make them very quickly with their villages. They've got a very strong keep because of the gunpowder uh, or the, the... Yeah, it's called the gunpowder slot, right? Not the gunpowder. The you, you guys know what I mean. Um... The, the emplacement that it's got. Um, so really, really nice change here. And it just gives them a little bit more longevity out on the map, which hopefully buys them more time, which allows them to come online. So overall, really good changes for the the, uh, the Chinese. Let's move on to the Delhi Sultanate and take a look what we have got. Oh my Lord. All right, Dome of the Faith, Scholar Discount improved from 50 to 65. So that takes the bonus from 39% up to 50%. Nice little bonus there. Definitely will add up over over the, the course of a game. Um, House of Learning. Reinforce Foundations base research time from 205 to 130. Uh, so Reinforce Foundations, if I remember correctly, is the houses getting double the amount of um, population space. So if we take a look at House of Learning, Reinforce Learning. Uh, villages and infantry can garrison inside houses for protection. Houses gain garrison arrows. Okay, that is not what I expected. What was I expecting? Yo, Pakes, Archers and Cro- you, What? No! <laughs> oh, wow. I just spoiled it for myself, dude. Dude, here, new technology, Pakes, Archers and Crossbowmen get 0.5 range? Yo, dude, that is insane. That is so much range. I mean, it's not a huge amount, but it, that's a lot, dude. Okay, Reinforced Foundations, yes. Tranquil Venue, base research time reduced hardy rations reduced owned honed blades reduced i know you're gonna write a comment about it just just write it i don't it doesn't matter how i pronounce it you're gonna write a comment owned blades honed blades honed blades um all right um so new technology pikes archers and crossbowmen gain 0.5 range uh new technology mahouts elephants move 10 percent faster not a huge amount and they do already move pretty slowly um, but I guess that they, they, they go from like, what, 0. 0.88 to 0. 0.96, 0. 0.95, somewhere around that region. Technology removed, lookout towers. Oh, this was really good. Damn, I like this for FFA. This was really nice. Now also provides mosque influence. Oh, it gets the Wi-Fi, dude. There you go. Ghazi Raider health reduced from 140 to 135. And I wonder what that, what that changes. I mean, I, I'd love for it to be like, this now means spearman kill it in eight shots instead of seven. Or eight shots instead of nine. War elephant tusk attack now deals damage in an area. Hello, <laughs> hello. The rise of the elephants, ladies and gentlemen. It is the patch of Delhi. Have a look at this. The house of learning is going to be legit, dude. Because now, what, what do you actually have in here? Let's have a look. Now, keep in mind, this is all available in the castle age. So you have reinforced foundations. So they they must have changed this at some point. And I just didn't get the memo. Uh, houses gain garrison arrows and 50% health. Uh, tranquil venue. M mosques restore four health every second to units that are out of combat. That's always tough when they have to be out of combat. My house. There we go. Elephants move 10% faster. Honed blades. Damage for men at arms and lances by three. Hardy rations. Increase the carry capacity of vills by 10. And pikes. So is there a world? And yes, there is. Oh my God. You can already see it right now. You know, we talk about it all the time with the Abbasid dynasty how they love to get that big mass of archers together. And once they get to castle age, they go for the military wing and they go composite bows and they get boot camp and they get plus two ranged armor 
and they get veterancy on their archers and they march 50 archers at your base and you go, what am I going to do? Well, now the Delhi Sultanate can open up with the Tower of Victory, which increases the attack speed of their archers by 20%. And on top of that, once they get to the Castle Age, they can now research pikes, which increases their range by 0.5. Might not seem like much, but I guarantee you when you start talking about 60, 70 archers and they start bl they start backing up and blocking up uh, th those big areas, that's a lot of range, dude. That is a lot of range. So, you know, it, it is going to take four minutes to research, which means that, you know, with, with a couple of scholars in there, it's probably down to three minutes, maybe 2.30, somewhere in that region. Um, but yeah, I think it's still going to be a pretty important upgrade to be getting. All right. Overall, good changes for the Delhi Sultanate. Let's check out, boys, the English. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for... <laughs> yeah, that's all you give me? All right. This better be good. Fixed an issue... <laughs> Fixed an issue. Fixed an issue where researching network of citadels disabled the network of castles ability on landmarks. Now, give me a second here. I'm going to ponder this while I take my drink. Does this mean what I think it means? Does this mean... I don't know whether it means the propagation of the ability. So fix an issue where researching Network of Citadels. So Network of Castles was fine, but then when you research Network of Citadels, it disabled the Network of Castles ability on landmarks. So does that mean that landmarks no longer propagated network of castles, meaning network of citadels once you upgraded it. So they didn't give units that were around it, the network of castles, or does it mean that the build, the landmarks themselves, in this case, the White Tower, in this case, the Berkshire Palace, didn't receive the attack speed from the network of castles? I don't know what that means, but either of those outcomes are a huge buff for the English. That's massive. Especially for the Berkshire, because the Berkshire is one of those landmarks that you kind of put out in the middle of nowhere. Sometimes. Sometimes you put them on the defensive, but, you know, we have seen players put them in the middle of nowhere. Often I will call them out and be like, this is a terrible idea, don't do this. Uh, but we still do it. We still do it, because it's fun. Uh, so that's a huge buff to them. And if it means more brr, then I'm all down for more brr. This is a buff to brr. All right, uh, not the not the biggest change list, but still, it's good. French. Fixed an issue where the artillery shot ability could target the player's own buildings. Yep, that, that, that'll, that'll get you. Economic technology's discount bonus increase from 30 to 35%. Very nice. Keeps it in line with the Abbasid bonus. Uh, trade posts fully revealed at the start of the game instead of just on the minimap. Okay, so you can actually physically see the trade posts. Very nice. And Chamber of Commerce trains free traders 100% faster from 30 seconds down to 15 seconds. Okay. So is there a world where we see like the Chamber of Commerce come back with a very quick age up just to get the traders out quickly? Probably not. Hmm. Interesting. We'll have to have a look at that. that, that that's, that's nice though. I like the push again for trade. We're not seeing a lot of trade in recent meta. It would be nice to see at least a little bit of it coming out. Holy Roman Empire. Increase the duration. Really? Increase the duration of Inspire for villagers from 30 seconds to 30. You thought the Holy Roman Empire needed a buff? And this is not a small buff. This is a big buff. This means that my my prelate at the start of the game can walk, take a little bit longer between his walks before he has to buff up the goldfields. Reduced civilization trait outpost line of sight bonus from 25 to 20%. Hitting them where it hurts, I see. Jeez, the devs have knocked Holy Roman Empire out of the park with that one. Fire out. An extra 5% off bonus line of sight. What are they going to do? Reduced relic inbuilding line of sight. <laughs> Holy Roman Empire, DTR. <laughs> what is that? Really? Reduced relic in building line of sight? Like, don't get me wrong. It was absolutely broken, the line of sight that you would get on those stupid outposts. You could see into the enemy's past, dude. Like, it was crazy how far you could see with those things. Uh, so this is a good change, but I don't know if this was the one that they needed. I'm still going to call this a buff overall just because of this right here. This is meaningful. It means your, your vills... 
uh, the, the more pre more a, a prelate can now support more villagers, and it probably works out to be like an extra two vills. So it's just gonna mean your your prelates are just getting better value in the late game as well. Really interesting. Japanese. Oh oh oh, Tatara cost reduced. Now Tatara is the their first level of melee upgrades available in the Dark Age. Tatara cost reduced from twenty five silver. Twenty five silver. 25 stone I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it like 25 s like 25 silver excuse me 25 stone dude please forgive me oh god where's my brain my brain's been in an mmo i've been mining silver somewhere uh 25 silver 75 gold to 25 25 silver did it again dude 25 stone 25 stone to 75 gold to 25 stone to 50 gold so a, a 25 gold nerf or rather boost buff coca township shinobi cost reduced from 60 food 60 gold and 22.5 to 50 food, 50 gold in 20 seconds. So very, very small buff, but could be noticeable, especially for those games where you're trying to eke out as much as you can on hybrid maps. Temple of Equality, getting a little bit more equality up in this bitch. Buddhist monch, Buddhist monks. Jeez, Drongo, calm down. Take, take a drink, Drongo. All right. Buddhist monks cost reduced from 100 to 80 gold. Zen cost reduced from 300 wood, 200 food, to 200 wood, 100 food. Now, if I remember correctly, Zen is the upgrade which allows your Buddhist monks to start generating gold. Let's take a look and see. I just want to confirm that. So it's at the Temple of Equality. Zen, Buddhist monks generate 25 gold every 60 seconds. Really, really nice. The cost for Zen was prohibitive, and it stopped you from investing into it because it costs so much. I'd almost be tempted for the devs to just remove this technology or just make it like a very meager cost. Because, but then do you get everybody going to Temple of Equality? I mean, not really. Floating Gate is still insane, right? Like you get free... Yeah, maybe it's okay where it is. Well, let's leave it where it is because I, I feel like this is one of those things where if you touch the balance for this anymore without playtesting it, it's just going to go off the deep end and everyone's going to be like going for Buddhist monks. Um, yeah, you got to be careful. Research time also reduced. Floating Gate, Yorishiro Productions. Oh, damn, Floating Gate gets nerfed. Get out of here, Floating Gate enjoyers. Yorishiro Production speed from 200% to 150. So now all of a sudden your mounted samurai instead of making three in the time that you would previously make one you're now making two and a half in the time that you would previously make one so small little change but definitely noticeable yoroshiro gold income from 75 gpm to 60 gpm get wrecked you yoroshiro enjoys dude this is so sick yoroshiro production on tc's from 25 to 30 percent this is this is a good change but it's a bad change the reason why I like this is because this is kind of saying, hey, put your Yoroshiro in a TC, but you don't want to do that because once your TC is, like, once you're maxed out, once you're at 130 vils, you've lost that Yoroshiro forever. Whereas if you keep it in a stable, you can delete that stable. If you put it in a, uh, if you put it into your forge, then that's going to be generating you gold for the whole game. But if you put it into a TC, you're only going to be getting that bonus for as long as you're making villages. You can't delete the TC. I mean, you can delete the TC if you really want to delete it to get the Yoroshiro back, but if you're on two TCs already, it doesn't make sense to throw a Yoroshiro in there because you've only got four in the Castle Age anyway. And if you've if you've only got one TC, well, you can't delete your, your capital TC. So there you go. Drongo's thought it out. Corrected an issue causing Yoroshiro description to, to display incorrect production speed values. And Daimyo Major... Oh, we're going too far. Daimyo Mena upgrade cost reduced from 300 stone to 225 stone. Nice little buff right here for the Japanese. So we've definitely seen some big buffs here to the Temple of Equality, to the Daimyo Mena. This is especially nice um, because what it means now, uh, let me just do the math here. Is there a world where I've got enough stone to get my Daimyo Mena upgrade and I've just got enough to age up if I gather from stone? I'd have to work out what the numbers are, but I think you might actually see some really quick age ups just with the Daimyo Mana. I, I think that could be the case. All right, let's move on. O overall, good changes for the Japanese. Also with this one as well, I, I think they may have changed these. I'd, I'll have to work it out again, but I suspect there's going to be something 
a, a nice round number that you're going to be able to get to in the early game to be able to afford this and to be able to afford this as well. Uh, so we'll, ha we'll have to wait and see how it plays out, but I suspect that's going to be the case. All right, Marlians. How many... Oh, we got some... Oh, damn, we got some Marlian changes. For Rimba Leadership. Cost... Now, th this is the upgrade available in the Imperial Age to your Sofa Warriors, if I remember correctly. Uh, it allows them... So it should be at the stable for Rimba Leadership. Yep. Uh, it increases the movement speed of nearby infantry by 15%. So... Uh, the cost has been reduced from a thousand resources down to 750 so f f quite a, a decent little buff there and reduces the th 30 seconds my lovely wife has just come and brought me a coffee thank you very much honey it's uh it's 1 30 in the afternoon i've only just woken up like an hour ago <laughs> so thanks honey uh local knowledge so technology reworked uh new effect is the m hold on local knowledge i don't even remember what this was my <laughs> my son has just woken up we've got a, a camera out in the uh in the living room uh and he was asleep in his bedroom he's woken up he's walked out into the living room and he's waved at the camera to say he's awake so he is uh anyway there you go there's, there's a little bit of a, a an rl update for you guys anyway uh technology reworked for local knowledge new effect is muso fighty warriors and gunners gain five health on hit for five seconds after coming out of stealth. Hold on. Is this saying that a Musafori, Musafori warrior goes into stealth, it comes out, and then for five seconds after it comes out, it gains plus five health on hit, meaning that every time it makes a hit or a strike or it hits the enemy, they gain back five health, meaning they've got lifesteal a static amount of life still a plus five health for five seconds so if they make three hits during that time they would gain 15 health that's huge that's massive dude that changes stealth significantly local knowledge when when does that come in that's a blacksmith i'm assuming no barracks yep available in the in the feudal age Musafari Warriors and Musafari Gunners gain plus 5 healing with each attack for 5 seconds. It doesn't say after coming out of stealth, but I'm assuming that's what it does. So we, we, we're correct in our identification. That's massive, dude. That's huge. Imagine if they're just fighting against spears, dude. Spears do 6 damage. These guys are healing for 5. You're just going to be laughing at the enemy as your health doesn't go down. They moved it from Castle to Feudal Age, and the cost was reduced. <laughs> that that technology is insane. Griot Barra, production festival, production speed increased from 50 to 100%. Adjusted description of production festival to correctly reflect that it applies to all units and not just military. And all festival durations increased from 60 to 90 seconds. Cooldowns are still 30 seconds. Wow. Okay, so a nice little buff right there to the late game Marlian. And Fort of the Huntress now fires poison arrows instead of regular keep and garrison arrows. Very cool. Marlian town center cost changed. From 400, 350. Whoa, hold on a minute. Why? Wait, wait, it's gold. It's gold. It's not stone. It's gold. Oh, damn, dude. Oh, damn. Marley and Town Center cost changed from 400 wood, 400 wood, 350 stone. 450 gold oh dude okay so on one hand everyone's gonna be saying this is a nerf it's a nerf you know stone gathers at the same rate that gold does yeah that's true but you also have a pit mine and your pit mine gives you free gold and the more buildings you put around the pit mine the more gold you get and so the standard might be two but now it's not really it's like six uh but does that mean people just start putting down the full eight buildings immediately to get the gold maxed as quickly as possible so they can just age up and drop the tc immediately bruh this is a good change as well because now it means that i don't have to spend dude you're never gonna have to drop a mining camp on stone unless you actually want to build a keep or get emplacements or build a stone wall or trade the stone for gold or trade the stone for <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think of other things anyway 
uh, interesting change from the devs. I mean, in line with Mongol changes, right? Like Mongols only. I mean, that's that's for a different reason. But curious that they they went for this. I like it. I like it. What if you saw the Rus town centers costing food? That nah, wouldn't make sense. You can't build a town center out of food. That's where you're wrong, kiddo. All right, Mongols, let's take a look and see what changes we've got. Quite a bit of lining up right here. Pasture sheep train time reduced from 116 seconds to 112 seconds. There you go. Nice little <laughs> nice little 3% buff here for you Mongol enjoyers. Raid bounty. Tech time reduced from 90 seconds to 45 seconds. Also applies to improved versions. So raid bounty. I'm assuming that's available at, I want to say at the Uvu raid bounty. Raid bounty. So it is increasing the ignite uh ignite income from or to 50 food and 50 gold uh so that's uh substantial so they've only just reduced the time that it takes to research it additional torches tech time reduced from 90 to 60 uh added imp improved superior mobility further increases the movement speed of packed buildings by 20 percent. this one could be big everybody does like to zoom i like to zoom you like to zoom this could be big it's only 100 stone as well Okay. Deerstone. Landmark updated. Now also unlocks the Khan Hunter in addition to granting Yam Network technology for free. The Khan Hunters are a unique support Mangadai trained from archery ranges. Okay, okay, hold on. Archery range. Oh my lord. Okay. Khan's Hunter. 60 wood, 60 gold? Is that... Are there any non-siege units that cost that much it, it does say support unit though so i don't think we can spam them support cav archer that can fire while moving has the khan's hunter aura that improves the range of nearby range units okay all right mangadai especially so I probably get an extra 0.5 out of the mangadai not bad kaganet palace Landmark update. Mangadai army changed from three Mangadais to... Th or four Mangadais to three Mangadais and two Khan's hunters. And horse archer army changed from five horse archers to four horse archers and one Khan's hunter. See, that's 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 pretty sick. Khan now uses a unique skin in Imperial Age. Okay. So big changes here to the Mongols. I like that they're making the deer stones a little bit more popular or a little bit more like, hey, pick me. You know, we're, we're, we're a fun, cool landmark. So that's a good change. And Ottomans. Istanbul Imperial Palace Vizier Point unlocked from 2 to 3. Yeah, I'm still not getting it. <laughs> Seagate Castle comes with a free Great Bombard emplacement. Okay, now you're talking to me. Seagate Castle's still kind of meh. But maybe you could put this into your thinking of going into trade. I don't know, man. If it, They're definitely saying like, hey, try and pick me. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm cool landmarks. So you guys could pick me. I feel like outside of a redesign, no one's going to pick Istanbul Imperial Palace. It just doesn't make sense. The The siege threat from the Ottomans is just too high with the MIA. All right, let's move on. The Rus. Ooh, hello, the Rus. Kremlin. Militia. Updated. No longer have a 60-second lifetime. Now take one health per second until left at one HP. Still very annoying. This is annoying. I don't like this. Um, mainly because... If you're not paying attention and someone has five militia that are all on one HP and the fight happens, then the five militia that are all on one HP go out and kill some villagers over on a deer hunt, they're still going to get really good value. But I guess that's one of the, you know, that that's one of the things, right? Like that's, you're damned if you, if you don't react to it, right? But I wonder if they can get healed. Probably not. You could out heal that, I guess, technically. Interesting. Golden Gate. Ticket generation time reduced from 60 to 50 seconds. Now has a timer UI element to show when the next ticket will arrive. Pretty cool. Abbey of the Trinity. Or Abbey of Trinity. Now reduces the cost of warrior monks by 50% at all monasteries. Rus bounty system has been updated. Rus, Rus players will no longer receive gold immediately when hunting animals. Instead, their villagers will gather a bonus one... No way. Oh. Wait, what? Rus players no longer receive gold immediately 
when hunting animals. Instead, their vills gather a bonus one gold for every 10 food gathered from sheep, deer, and boar. When deposited, the bonus gold... Okay, that's not that's not that bad. That's not that bad, Drongo. Calm down, it's okay. I'm um, Here I am thinking they've got an English bonus all of a sudden. It's not that bad. Okay, it's not that bad. When deposited, the, the, the bonus gold will contribute to the total collector bounty. Okay, so... Bounty tier 3 gold requirement increased from 500 gold to 750 gold. Hunting cabin tier 3 gold generation reduced from 65 to 50%. Okay. So... To get to tier 1, I'm assuming it's 100 gold. 250 gold for tier 2, and then 750 gold for tier 3. So if it's 1 gold for every 10, then that means you need 2,500 food to be gathered. Which is not a lot. Like, it, the, the biggest barrier to entry here... It's not going to be the amount of sheep you've got, but rather how long it takes to gather that 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 food. It's not going to be a question of if, it's going to be a question of when. For 750 gold, you need 7,500. Now, a single hunt of deer has got 350 food in it. There are seven deer inside that, which means that you're looking at 2350 or 2250. Three to 2450? 20, yeah, 2450. Because 3 times 7 is 21. And then 7 times 0.5 is 3.5. So 24.50 food. So you would need 3 full hunts. You would need like 2 full hunts and a boar and a couple of sheep. So definitely, definitely possible. Like I, I would not be surprised if Rus are getting full bounty, 750 gold every single game. It's going to take time though. That's the thing. It's, it's going to progress over the course of the game. Uh, and that's it. And that, then that's obviously going to power this one up. Okay, so that, that's the that's the roost changes right there. So overall, eh, not, not a huge fan. A little bit of rework for stuff. Variant sieve changes. Here we go. Hold on, give me a sec. I'm going to try give a, give a taste of my coffee right here. Oh my god, it's amazing. My wife, I, I tell everybody whenever they come over and they, they have a coffee and they're like, that is so good. I'm like, yeah, let me, let me explain why. My wife went and did a, like a barista course. I think it took her about a week. And uh, she learned how to make really, really good coffee. So now I'm just blessed with good coffee. All right, let's 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 move forward. Variant civilization changes. Fixed an exploit, so that for the Aeobids, fixed an exploit in which moving an Utterbag at the moment of garrison could duplicate the Utterbag. Okay, good, good little fix. Eco wing. Industrial in industry resources granted increased at each age. So this was the wood. So three hundred to three fifty, a thousand to eight hundred wood and four hundred stone, and twenty five hundred wood to two thousand wood, nine hundred stone. Trade wing advises Artebeck pop cost change from one to zero. Culture Wing Logistics now permanently turns on the healing aura with all ages instead of only with age 4. Scaling value per age is 2 HP per second, 2.5 HP a second, and 3 HP a second. Okay. Culture Wing Logistics just got very good, dude. I would not be surprised if we do see people going for this. It makes sense to go for this in the second age, and then in the third age, go for the Vils. I wonder if we'll see players do that. That's really nice. Trade Wing Bazaar. Skirmisher health increased from 70 to 80. Damage from 7 to 8. Swords Master health increased from 140 to 155. Damage from 9 to 10. Units no longer get stuck in queue behind age ups. Golden Age tier, tier, two, tier 2 research time bonus decreased from 50 to 25%. Dervish cost increased from 60 food, 120 gold to 60 food, 140 gold. Damn, that's a lot. So my question is, does the Ayubid age up show on my UI when I'm casting them yet? Because we've been having that issue now for whew, almost a year and it still hasn't been fixed. Just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, overall changes for Ayubid. 
they seem minor and they're targeting areas that are less used, right? Like we're not really using the Utterbex. We're not really, except for Imperial Age. We're not really using the Eco Wing, um, or rather the uh, industry resources. Um, if you're going to use the Eco Wing, like you're largely going to be using it for the Vils. Um, so curious to see exactly what the plan is for people here. Like maybe this could be for a nice fast second TC. Like you go age three and you just drop a TC. Maybe that's what the play is going to be. All right, Jeanne of Arc. Economic tech, tax reduced or increased from 30 to 35%, trade post fully revealed, and Chamber of Commerce free traders. So basically all the same all the same bonuses as the French. Order of the Dragon, here we go. Ville train, oh my God, they buffed the Order of the Dragon. It might not look like a lot, but that is good. Ville train time reduced from 24 to 23 seconds, and Burgrave discount research speed and production speed increased from 30 to 35 seconds. Really, really nice changes for the Order of the Dragon. Is it going to push them over? You'll have to wait and see. This is pretty big though, because you've got to remember with this, right? Now your first villager comes out one second faster. So it's collecting one second's worth of food more over the course of the game. Your second vill comes out two seconds faster. Your 10th vill comes out 10 seconds faster. And now you can see how this starts to add up. So, you know, over the course of the first minute or first, you know, five minutes of the game, this could lead to a significant amount of extra resources. Is it going to be game changing? Probably not. Is it going to help them? Definitely. So nice little change there for them. Juicy Legacy. F variant for the Chinese. Fixed an issue where Yuan Dynasty wouldn't affect Siege Workshop Rams. Montlu Academy. Imperial Red Seals cost decreased from 200 food, 400 gold. And 90 seconds to 100 food, 200 gold, and 45 seconds. Very, very nice change. So now you're all of a sudden going to be seeing people actually go for this straight away. Well, not even straight away, but like up upon getting like up. It just makes sense, right? Like the whole theme of the Juicy Legacy is Imperial officials. So I think that that is a pretty smart move for the devs to do that. Juicy's library. Research, reduce research time of all text to 30 seconds. So it used to be 90 seconds. You used to have to get the... Um, the uh, Zhukunu upgrade first because it took so damn long. Roar of the Dragon increased area of effect thresholds from point to 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 1. I got no, I've got no idea what this means because you can only get Roar of the Dragon in the Imperial Age. So, oh, I think I know. Okay, uh, it's talking. So it, it, for anybody wondering, this is for the area of effect damage on spears and horsemen. Uh, so I think what it's saying is very close medium distance and then further distance so it's just increasing them but i don't know by how much and palace guard health increase from 120 to 130 so that's just in the feudal age i don't think that affects your castle age or your imperial age so some buffs right there to the juicy legacy a little bit of a, like weird buffs and definitely not going to be you know overwhelming in their power but nice little and a nice little fix here as well to battering rams costing less um but overall, nice little changes. This one's this one's pretty good. It means they can probably fight a little bit more effectively against longbows as well, uh, which they definitely had trouble with in the Feudal Age. All right. So that's the end of the changes. So overall for the balance changes, I think this has been pretty good. I haven't had any real negative feedback apart from the uh, Holy Roman Empire, which is just... <laughs> uh, other than that, yeah. I, I maybe like a, a nerf to the English could have been okay, and I wouldn't have gotten too upset um but other than that let's take a look and see what is ongoing investigation uh your community reports fair enough uh, and then on the horizon this is what we were looking for uh that concludes everything for this update our team has already pivoted to season nine with a special focus on updating the late game some of the updates we're working on include a full siege gameplay update including a rework of the role and functionality of Springles and Culverin. I'm curious how they do that, because I feel like it's in a bit of an awkward spot right now because they counter each other, and maybe they shouldn't counter each other. Maybe they should just be like, then what counters them? Cavalry, but then you just defend it, and then so you just march forward like Culverin. Then how do you kill enemy Culverin if you don't have... Yeah, how do they do that? Okay. New coursework becomes available at the University for All Civilizations. Hello, some new upgrades maybe. The Ottomans enlist some new viziers with additional options for their council. Okay. And Mansa unleashes his personal guard with the Farimba garrison. Season 9 will, will release in the fall and will feature a variety of new events with exciting seasonal game modes similar to map monsters. 
While we can't commit to it fully just yet, we're also investigating the inclusion of multiplayer pause. Get out of here as part of the season. No, I don't believe it. No, nah, that's not happening. I, I was told, man. I was told I didn't need it in. I couldn't do it in multiplayer. I don't need it in single player. I, I remember. It was the. <laughs> I remember. Anyway, um, I'm kind of curious how they go about doing the siege rework. Because if you just made it that Springles and Culverins can't counter each other, then all of a sudden you're left with this really awkward spot where, like, I bring my mangonels and my springles, and my springles kill your mangonels, and your springles kill my mangonels, and now we've just got no siege and springles. So does that all of a sudden mean that like if you did that, that crossbows and and like archers would become the supreme? I I think it does actually. How do you deal with mass crossbow, mass archer? Anyway, they'll, they'll work it out. That's why they're the devs, and that's why we sit here and go, hmm, I wonder. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Hopefully, you guys have been, enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have, leave a like. If you haven't, uh, leave a dislike, and let me know why in the comments. And of course, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.